in the 17.12 version of Visual Studio 2022 that came out in November of 2024, there were quite a few new features added to Visual Studio. In this video, we're going to look at four quick features that will make you a more efficient developer. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you need a quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's jump right into Visual Studio 2022. And if you notice here under help, if you go to about Visual Studio, you can see it's 17.12. Now I have the, uh, the 0.4 version of this, which just means there's been some bug fix releases that have come out since then. So notice the overall version of Visual Studio is Visual Studio Community Edition, in my case, 2022, but then that has a version number, in this case, version number 17.12.4. Okay, so what I have here is a very simple application. And the first thing we're gonna look at is looking at return values. So here I have this math.calculate, I pass in a number and it gets back a result. Now this is a very common thing to do in software development. And if you come over here, we see I have this crazy calculation that's right in the return. So how do I debug this in this method? Now I could come over here and put a breakpoint, you know, after this somewhere, which actually there's nothing after this really it's to put a breakpoint on. So I have to, have to put some code here or what you've probably done in the past is said, well, let's do this. Let's say uh, var output equals and then return output. And then you can put your breakpoint right here and capture what that value is before it leaves the method. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. So let's go back to what we had before this, which is just the return value. We're gonna put the breakpoint on the close curly brace after the return. All right, so if we run this application right now. It doesn't matter you know, what it's doing, but notice right here on the screen, we have the return value is 17. So this method will return 17 as its result. We don't have to put this in a variable anymore in order to capture that return value right on screen. So let's put a breakpoint, enter close curly brace, and you're good to go. So that's the first thing is to see a method's return values right away in debug mode. So you're in debugging, you put a breakpoint somewhere, you can see the return value if it's been calculated and returned. All right, next one up, we're gonna actually bring in a different bit of source code. This is the suggestion site application. If you haven't seen, I have a whole course here on YouTube building the suggestion site app. And this code is from that at a certain point in time. It's not the latest version of it, but it's a, at a certain point in time. And the big deal here is that it's in source control on GitHub. Now it's not available to you on GitHub. That's only for people who actually paid for the course, but you can watch along and build it yourself. Um, but the key here is it's on GitHub, which means that if I were to be working with my coworkers and say, hey, I wanna point out something specific in a specific file. Let's say I come down here into pages and go to suggestions. And this file is rather large. And I might say, hey, you know, on the suggestions on this line, they may say, well, what, what do you mean on that line? Well, I could say, well, it's actually um, the issue I, I'm spotting is right in this section right here. So I highlight that section. How do I share that with my coworkers? Well, I right click on it. I go to Git and I say, copy GitHub permalink. If I copy that, let's just minimize this for a minute and come over here, we'll put a breakpoint in our program.cs. I'm sorry, a, a comment. I'm gonna paste this in. And it says long string, but if you notice, it starts off github.com, my um, repository section, my actual repo name, and then blob, and it has the, the long string and it has the pages, the location. And then right here, it says, here's the lines of code this is going to. Now, if we come over here, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, paste and go to that section. If you notice, it went right to the section. Look at line 297 to 304. It highlighted that might not be a great contrast on your screen, but it highlighted this method and put our cursor right at the beginning of it. So I can actually start making, um, you know, making a new issue from this. I can, 
you know, view the git blame. I couldn't actually do work on this bit of code. So that's the second thing is copy a git link right to a specific file in your repository and then be able to share that. So that's number two. Now, let's say I am back in my, um, my suggestion app and I say, you know what? Um, I'm going to use a model on, the on maybe, maybe I'm working on the front end. This is a, a totally separate back end project, or whatever. I have this model here. Let's go with uh, the email model. And I want to make a copy of this for my other project, uh, whether it's, you know, one's front end, one's back end, or they're just similar enough that I want to make a copy of it rather than trying to link to a shared project or something like that. So I want to copy from this project to a different instance of Visual Studio. Not a problem. Right click on the email model, say copy. Let's minimize this. I'm back in program.cs. We can get rid of, of line eight here. Um, I'm back in program.cs. I'm going to right click on my project or whatever folder I'm, I want. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say paste. Now I have my email model in this Visual Studio. I didn't have to go and find the physical file or you know view in File Explorer and copy that file and bring it over. It's very easy now to copy from one instance of Visual Studio to another. Now note the uh, namespace is still the original namespace, no problem. You can just right click here and say Quick Actions Refactory and say we want to um, change the namespace to match the folder structure. And now it's updated to use VS update demo namespace because that's where it lives. Okay. That is number three, which is copying files between Visual Studio instances. Number four, let's say you have a, a bug in your code somewhere and it's, it's a um, design time bug. Like we forgot a semicolon here. And so you get the right squiggly here. We also get it in the error list. Well, here's what used to happen. You might say, oh, you know what? What is that error? I'm not quite sure what that error is. I want to Google it. Now, always read your error messages. Okay, that's a that's a free bonus tip. But what used to happen, let's right click on this. You see when I copy it, this is what used to happen. Let's copy row. And then you go to paste it. Let's just paste as a comment here. And this is what you get. And you go, well, that's, you know, that's, that's a mess. I've got to kind of fight through to find out where which things are relevant and pasting that into Google doesn't really work. Well, that's changed now. Go to the error list and just say copy instead of copy row. So the default now is copy. We hit copy. Look what's going to give us for our value. Syntax error. And that was what was expected. Now, it's interesting that it says comma expected um, instead of semicolon expected. That's interesting. Um, I guess they think that that's what we're expecting, which is not right. But in any event, what it's giving us is the actual, just the description when we make a copy. So now we can paste this directly into Google or ChatGPT, or, you know, we can actually talk directly to GitHub Copilot here, but we can use just the error description, not all the extra stuff that isn't really relevant. For example, which, which file is located in, which project is located in, which line number it's on. Uh, these don't matter to people on Stack Overflow or people in Google because that's just red herring information. It's, it's specific to your project. What really you want to know is this description right here, maybe the code, but mostly just the description that says exactly what the error is. So that is how to copy the error description from the error list, not the entire thing, which makes it much faster to look up your errors. So that's the four things that have been improved, four of many, but four things have been improved in Visual Studio since November of 2024. So you can see method return values. You can copy a Git link from a specific line of code or section of code. You can copy files between VS instances, and you can copy the error description only when you're copying an error. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.